Hello, hello, my name is Leo and welcome to a new tutorial by Blau Films. Today we will be looking at a little bit of cloud compositing, a little bit of sky replacement, and I guess we're going to be looking a little bit at how I created this city sequence. This is probably going to be a little shorter video than usual, but I just wanted to break down the more situational aspect of some of these sky replacement shots. Sometimes it's easier to just break down an example and then you can figure out how that is relevant to whatever you're working on. Cool, let's get into it. So first of all, let's have a look at the city sequence over here. Now, these buildings have all been created for the Cesar Ivan Tiempo music video that me and Eric recently did. And we were creating these buildings in the most simplistic way possible. These are really just extrusions and just very, very simple basic shapes. Now, the reason why we built them like that is so we could have the ultimate versatility when doing the music video. We wanted a cell shaded look, so it's very easy to make these geometric buildings look as if they're 2D. So these assets are all actually available in a digital pack on our ArtStation store. You know what to do. Come to me and then store and then down here we have construct, the city buildings pack. Build your worlds with construct. And these are all the buildings that are in the pack. And then we have some like gibberish down there, like some billboards, some signs and like a little petrol station and stuff. These buildings I've then taken into this scene in Cinema 4D. And as you can see, I have taken some of the smaller ones and I've put them inside of a cloner with some instancing going on. As you can see here, I set the instance mode to multi instance. And then except for that, it's just a grid. Multi instancing is very useful if you want to make sure that your computer doesn't explode. So you don't run out of RAM as quick as you would usually do so. And then I got a uh, Gundam RX down there in the back. And it's just like I, I took some of these buildings over here. And then I kind of merged them together into a longer section. And then I created like a cube with a uh, central area in the middle with a communal space in the middle. I really believe there's quite a lot of versatility when it comes to these assets. Like most of the other stuff that you're seeing on top of the buildings are not included in the pack. And these are just things that I found in other kit bash sets or just things I quickly modeled to slap on there. But you know, the, the pack is really to, to give you a nice base that you can quickly populate. Construct, there you go. You can get it and uh, if you are checking out this video, be sure to use the coupon code on the screen because, you know, thank you for checking out. Shout out to you if you are a Blau Films community member, right? Like, can we say that? Yeah, we can say that. We've got enough people to say that it's a community. <laughs> All right, now it's time to do some After Effects. So if I solo out the EXR layer, you can see that the horizon ends right there. And I felt like from the point of view that we were looking, the horizon should lie a little bit further ahead. And I wanted to have some mountains in the background. The way to kind of do that, first of all, is I rendered a second version. I rendered a second pass in Cinema 4D that basically just has, as you can see, a gray plane over there, nothing too special. And I pushed everything back into Z space, repositioned some of these buildings, and then I rendered that out as a still. And because we have the 3D camera data from the scene, which we basically just extracted using Cineware, then I can place the 2D horizon shot into 3D space and then just make sure that it sticks right on there, as you can see. And then just make sure to turn on motion blur and check motion blur over here as well. And then it feels pretty natural. It's just like a quick and easy way to extend your set at the end of everything. So here we go. We have our entire scene. Now, the next thing that I feel like is important is paying attention to your light direction. So I have this image from a mountain in Albuquerque that I got from Commons Wikimedia. Shout out to Commons Wikimedia as well. It's a great place for you to find very high resolution, royalty free imagery. And here I just went into Photoshop and I alphaed out the entire mountain ridge. 
And the good thing about this is because this mountain is so far away, we already have the atmospheric perspective embedded into the image. So that helps us when making sure to figure out what the correct light values and atmospheric values would be for the background. I also made sure to have some kind of light direction visible in this background. So as you can see, we have some of the highlights on the right side, which even though the image is more of a opaque scattered sunlight look, it does give the feeling like it matches because the big Gundam over here is obviously lit from the right. And then after that, it's really about going into your library of cloud assets, your library of background assets, and then just playing around and knowing what it is that you're looking for. And knowing what it is what you're looking for, I think is very important. In the advanced sky replacement tutorial, which is a bit on the older side now, I do speak about how you can emphasize a story or a genre or whatever is going on in your sequence by using a certain type of clouds. For me, in this situation, I wanted this idea of a very modern, futuristic kind of city and the clouds should feel some kind of anime-inspired, puffy, epic, but very widescreen. Also think David Lean movies like Lawrence of Arabia or The Bridge on the River Kwai, where you can see these long cinema scopes of epic environments. We know from the camera settings inside of Cinema 4D that we're on a focal length of 50 millimeter, but we are shooting on a 70 millimeter frame. If you know this channel, if you follow Blau Films for a while, you know that we have a bunch of cloud packs. Again, available on the ArtStation store. It's very difficult to find high resolution cloud assets that have enough range for you to play with. And these are all taken on camera raw. We have a bunch of different ones. We have a bunch of different packs. So it's uh, clouds for cloud spotters and three artists. Check out either the overcast ones or the 400 raw ones and I believe we will be using the clear sky ones. If you have your own assets, be sure to use them. Just be sure that your assets have a wide enough range in the colors so that you can accurately match them with the sequence that you're going for. So the process is very simple. We take an asset, for example, this clear sky over here. The clear sky originally looked like this. As you can see, there is quite a bit of a cyan tone in some of these shadows. If you look at the top right corner over here, you can see what my color picker is giving. And it's a pretty greenish tone. I just increased the green channel and I made sure to lower the mid tones a little bit. Here we go. That's a bit more of a match. And then I lowered the vibrance because this is basically, I'm using this clear sky asset as our background plate that we will be compositing some of the clouds on top of. Then we just have that in 3D space, pushed behind the Albuquerque mountains, and then that's it. As you can see, the next three layers we've added are basically two cloud assets, one that I've split in half, this top one, which is made up of the right section and the left section. The reason why I'm using these two is because they have a pretty defined light direction that matches the light direction in our scene. And I believe I actually had to flip one of these to make sure that the light direction matched. One of the things, like, like I'm from the Netherlands and I know that the clouds over here are never fully dark at the bottom because there is so much reflection from the sea and as we are so many meters below sea level, that means that the clouds catch quite a bit of light and give off more of a grayish subtle tone in the bottom. I personally think that even though that's not something that happens all over the world, it does give a very nice, cinematic, pleasant feeling. So that's the original cloud asset. And then first of all, by lifting the shadows and by lifting the greens a bit, we can get a pretty accurate match to the background and then just a very subtle levels adjustment to then bring in everything to where it should be. The next layer over here as well, I'm adding some of these very, very wide cloud shots all the way down the bottom over here, kind of implying that there are some layers of clouds that are passing through the mountains or going on top of the mountains, 
or that they are still behind it, but there is some haze in the atmosphere over there. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is that once I do a bit of a grade on top of everything, this whole backplate is gonna merge very nicely and it's gonna feel as if we are correctly exposed to the foreground plate and then there is a high complexity background plate that, that feels believable even though that's not our focus. Cool, then we have this one big asset over here which was a little bit more tricky to match in color. It's a bit more of a darker image with especially a lot of the mid-tones over here being in luminance value very similar so you can't really exclude a certain area nicely but with some pushing and pulling we can kind of bring it over the values that we have to be at and then with an exposure effect kind of make it a little bit more milky still really trying to get a match of what you're looking for the best tip i can give for trying to get a color accurate match is just move your composition very far away and just kind of work like this this is the size that i like to work on when i'm doing these things so vibrance negative 34 and then there you go it's basically a seamless transition if you want to get super accurate I'm sure that I'm actually going to talk to Eric about this when it comes to having color accurate monitors and maybe doing some color matching in Da Vinci. I have never really done color matching in Da Vinci, so you know, maybe something for a future tutorial. Now we are basically going to be color grading the backplate separately and then color grading everything together. So I have an adjustment layer over here, and as you can see in the effects rack, we are lowering the mid-tones, we are making it less saturated by increasing the tint, then we're adding a tritone effect to give off some kind of a film processing look that we're blending with it, 55%, and then finally we are lowering the peaks of the highlights, be a bit more grayed out. And together, this is what we get. Supposedly, we are at a shutter speed of 50 with an ISO of 800, but we do have an f-stop of 22. And just from, I guess, experience with the camera or being out there and knowing how dark an f22 image would kind of be, that's why I'm making sure to lower the intensity on the sky a little bit. Then again, it kind of integrates more nicely with the foreground, keeping the Gundam as the brightest spot, kind of, you know, it's catching the light on its highly reflective white surface, so it stays the hero in the shot. Now we have a additional adjustment layer that's going on top that is now increasing some of that exposure again, very, very subtly. And then finally, I have an adjustment layer with a gamma correction, there you go. Now, these last two adjustment layers, if I show you with the mask on, you can see that the one that increases the exposure is only increasing the exposure at the bottom. Can you see it? Yeah, so it's creating that classic horizon glow where it just feels, everything feels a bit more foggy, a bit more hazy at the bottom. And then the top one is masked out from the top with like a feather of 600 uh, which again are values that are dependent on the size of your shot but this way we can create a little bit of a fall off a vignette a more natural looking vignette cool let me see that is basically everything except for all the way on top we have a adjustment layer with a camera lens blur of 5 and an aspect ratio of 0 0.5 and then that whole thing set the screen giving it a bit of a glow and the opacity is taken all the way down to 11 percent this is just because i didn't export this sequence with a separate bloom and glare pass and i didn't feel it was necessary for just the purposes of what we were doing and just doing it this way with an adjustment layer set the screen and the camera lens blur effect works perfectly you can either like even go crazier and uh duplicate your whole system color grade that down until you have a more contrasty black and white image and then apply your camera lens blur only to that so you have more of a threshold control in general this technique works fine for what we're doing 
Now this whole thing gets pre-composed and then we just have some more adjustment layers. Adjustment layers, then adjustment layers. That's really the life of comping. One of them is doing a contrast boost and a overall tritone effect on the entire image. I find it very difficult to find the balance between making your shot look like an Instagram filter and still keeping a believable natural film processing look but something like 95 90 percent at the max of a tritone effect seem to be the values where i'm most comfortable with i'd say and then finally i have a adjustment layer with a camera lens blur and a vignetting effect with a high feather mask set to subtract As you can see it just gives a subtle vignette to the whole image focusing us on the gundam and focusing on the center of the image even more Finally, I have some Cine Action Film Grain, which is just one of the more rougher ones I have. And there you go, it just kind of blends everything nicely. Here you can see the Gundam with the bright front light and then a little bit of a cyan and a purple rim light. The lighting was actually very fun to do, inspired by some nonsensical references I found, trying to really give that uh, hyper-realism, ultra-stylized... I guess like anime kind of look, I guess, I guess P.T. Anderson kind of look, Michael Mann kind of look, whatever it is, but that's about it. So I hope this quick video helped you get a bit more clarity on how to approach color matching, I would say, and how to approach some more sky replacement, depending on your scene. I will probably do a few more of these breakdowns just based on whatever sequence we're doing. The more examples you have, probably the better for just understanding how to go about it yourself. Either way, thank you very much. Thank you if you are one of the 1,260 subscribers that we currently have on Blau Films. It's insane to see that this channel keeps growing and, you know, people seem to actually care. It's amazing. It's very, very heartwarming to read the comments that I've been getting and... Uh, me and Eric are, you know, Eric is working on a movie right now, so he's like extremely busy, but but we will figure out some time to pick up the Lighting Mastery series again, because there's just so much stuff that we learned in the recent weeks, months, and we can't wait to share it with you. We're getting Gabby on a video this week as well, so that's going to be great. So all of you interested in editing, you, you, you got your learning material back on, and... I'll be I'll be doing some stuff as well. So be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. That helped me out tremendously. Be sure to leave a comment for whatever, you know, just like say hi. I uh, I like to reply to comments. And again, you know what's up? Come to the Art Station store. Check out the store. Bricks Graffiti Scrapbook. Made this thing with bricks. I'll be doing a video about that soon. It's 100% the best graffiti decals pack available on the internet. Because most graffiti decals pack, you can see that they were made on a Wacom. These have been made on a massive wall with a bunch of different caps on different spray cans. So get these if you're into urban environments. Construct if you are into urban environments, I guess. The cloud packs will help you out tremendously, decals packs for whatever you need, organic star fields, and a bunch of planets. That's everything we have for now, with a lot more to come. So, uh, thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.